This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Health One. Good morning. This is Nick Sippis. In conjunction with our upcoming unfiltered podcast with Dr. Chris Hoyt, medical toxicologist, wanted to do a couple of quick toxicology reviews. The first one will be on arsenic toxicity. So this is a heavy metal toxicity. It binds to a number of cellular enzymes uh, and uh, inhibits cellular respiration or aerobic metabolism. Uh, It's primarily absorbed through the skin, the respiratory tract and GI. Classically, when you think of heavy metal exposures, you think of GI irritation and then multi-system organ failure. Uh, Presentation oftentimes includes kind of a watery diarrhea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. Uh, You can have things like uh, GI bleeding, cardiovascular collapse, um, uh, and uh, other uh, respiratory and renal involvement. but those are the the acute the acute features typically include GI um, uh, and then there's a delayed onset of elevated LFTs uh, and uh, then there's also kind of chronic toxicity which we won't really address here much. Uh, you, you know your workup for these folks with uh, if you're concerned whether it's an environmental concern of environmental exposure if there's anything in the history that suggests intentional or uh, poisoning. Um, you're going to get your, your usual kind of toxicology workups. Uh, you're going to do uh, 12 lead. Uh, you're going to check your basic labs. Uh, if Depending on their symptomatology, uh, their arsenic is radiopaque. If you think that they took it in uh, some sort of uh, pill form or a, a large enough volume that you could, s- to, you could see it on chest or abdominal x-ray, although that's rare. Um, and then, uh, but a lot of the diagnosis is just made based on multi-system organ uh, dysfunction. Uh, and your treatment consists, of, if it's, uh, there, there is potentially a role for whole bowel irrigation early. If the patient's cooperative, obviously you're doing that in conjunction with your uh, poison center colleagues. Uh, you are uh, obviously supportive care is, the, the, is one of the mainstays of treatment. Uh, your uh, symptomatic management of any vomiting or other GI losses. Uh, and then uh, there are two antidotes. So uh, board review question would say that uh, the agent of choice for uh, those who can tolerate by mouth would be succimer. That's a chelating agent. Again, heavy metal toxicity. Think, what am I going to chelate this? What am I going to bind this metal with? If you can't uh, do oral administration, then you can do dimercaparol. That's an IM. Uh, that's an IM administered medication. Um, the uh, working with your poison center colleagues. Uh, uh, will help you determine how your patient's responding to supportive care and chelation. Uh, but a lot of these folks uh, will require multiple system organ, you know, uh, supportive uh, interventions. Uh, you have to watch out for uh, peripheral neuropathies, which can sometimes uh, present insidiously and then progress. Um, and uh, obviously, if, if there's any concern, these folks are staying in-house and, and staying under very close observation. Uh, kudos to Dr. Hoyt. Look forward to having his uh, podcast interview on Unfiltered coming out this week, as well as a great review on arsenic toxicity on Life in the Fast Lane with Dr. Neil Long. Uh, so check those out, uh, and we'll continue to do a couple of uh, other toxicology quick reviews uh, as a little mini toxicology week. Thanks. Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Bradley, anesthesiologist and U.S. Naval officer. I'm also the host and creator of the Black Doctors podcast. This podcast provides weekly 30-minute episodes that tell the stories of minority healthcare professionals. It is my hope that hearing these unique and inspiring stories will encourage others to consider pursuing these challenging and rewarding career paths. So please join me for the Black Doctors podcast. Available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all major streaming platforms.